friends and sorcerers, and welcome back to another installment of Plant Magic and Potions. We're here on another foraging adventure, looking for plant allies, looking for new friends, and we're in another place where you might not expect to be looking, but here they are, hidden in plain sight right outside the schoolyard. So community parks and even parking lots, abandoned gardens, these are some of the best places to find some really common medicinal allies. So today we're actually gonna see a lot of familiar faces and we're gonna meet somebody new. So right here, see if you can see, I have to go all the way down onto the ground, looking in the grass. I find my friend Plantain. And so I know it might be a little hard to see. Plantain is this nice, shiny leaf. And you might notice some special things about Plantain. So it grows on the ground and it grows in what's called a basal rosette. So all the leaves are coming out of the base of the stem and they stay really, really low to the ground. You notice the parallel veins that they run along the leaf. Now the grass has recently been mowed here. I can tell because most of these plantain leaves have been chopped up at the top. But when they're fully intact, some people think that they have the shape of an egg. Anyways, plantain is one of my favorites. And we're gonna talk a lot about it, but I like to consider it a first aid plant. It's useful in all kinds of situations. The other plant that you may have noticed sitting right here next to our plantain is little baby chickweeds. There's little chickweeds all over the place and they're a little bigger than the, the chickweed that we found last week because, you know, spring's coming along. It's a little warmer. There's been some more moisture here. So you can even see some little flowers on these chickweed plants. And we also have a dandelion flower. There's all kinds of dandelions. Here's dandelion and plantain growing next to each other. So when we crawl around on the ground and look really closely, we can find all kinds of things. So coming back to plantain, here's a nice plantain leaf. This is like the quintessential plantain leaf. So like I said, we've got those parallel veins. It's a broad leaf. When you flip on the back side, you can see the prominent, you can see the really exaggerated veins. So plantain, we think of it as the bee sting plant. And it's not just good for bee stings, but when you get a bee sting, what happens? It hurts. Sometimes you get a rash or swelling, inflammation. So it can hurt, it can burn, it can be itchy. And we want to prevent infection and we want to pull out the stinger. So anytime that you have something like that, a bee sting, a wasp sting, a prick from a thorn or stinging nettles, or even if you just get a small cut, things like that, plantain's gonna be good for that. I like to take plantain and chew it up And then you get this green paste, kind of gross and gooey. It kind of looks like a booger. But let's say I had a, a cut or got a bee sting. I would place the plantain right on my skin, wherever the ouch, wherever the problem is. And already I can feel it's nice and soothing on my skin. It's kind of like a juice. I like, I love to put this, especially if I know that I touched poison ivy, I always rub plantain wherever I touched the poison ivy. It's automatically, immediately soothing. It feels cool and moist. 
and it starts to draw things out. So like if there were a stinger stuck in there, it could help draw the stinger out, helps prevent infection, and it helps to repair the tissue. Plantain is an amazing little plant. You can eat it. I like the taste of it, but some people don't like the taste of it so much. You could put it in a soup and we'll get into more of the good medicinal qualities of plantain but keep your eyes peeled get down on your hands and knees and look around for plantain see you soon